Hello, everyone, and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So as we're kind of ramping up towards the launch of James Webb, I've had a few people ask me, like, what's the difference? And do we need to replace Hubble? Because Hubble's given us a ton of great images, as well as is James Webb really its replacement? So I wanted to kind of do a side by side comparison of James Webb versus Hubble. And believe it or not, we had an expert who talked with us for the James Webb telescope. So if you want to check out the video from the SCOBY Education Center on our Astronomy on Tap with uh, Alexandra Lockwood, who talked about the James Webb Observatory and what unique things we hope to be able to observe from it, I'll leave a link up here to that video and you can check out that awesome lecture series that we had with her where she did an amazing presentation on the James Webb. So let's dive into the two telescopes side by side, what James Webb is capable of and is Hubble going to be replaced? Let's dive into it. So first off, we need to talk about the history of Hubble. Now keep in mind, Hubble was launched in 1990. It is over 30 years old. So imagine having a truck or a car that has existed for over 30 years and you've been constantly driving it. Um, for most standard cars, it starts to show its wear and tear. And even with a lot of cars that were designed back in the day that could handle several years, eventually those vehicles start to show its age after 30 years. And yes, a lot of missions have gone to Hubble to do some repairs and to do some maintenance work and to do some upgrades. But eventually over time, that's like putting new parts into an old car. Some of those parts are gonna to start to be harder and much more difficult to replace, especially with newer technology that can only be updated on the ground. Sometimes it, it's kind of difficult to add new stuff to the Hubble Space Telescope, especially when you have to worry about its weight. But despite over the 30 years and a lot of problems and a lot of technical difficulties, it has taken over 1.3 million images and observations. So because of this amazing telescope, we have gotten to see our universe in a different way. And with all these different images, it's made tons of discoveries. Some of the most major discoveries was it helped us to solidify the age of the universe because it was able to see further out into space so we can able to get a rough idea how old our universe is. It was able to detect some of the moons of Pluto. Back in the day we only knew of one. Now thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope we realize it now today has five. It noticed the rate of the expanding universe and that it's in accelerating and that every single galaxy that we have discovered has a black hole of some kind, and also created the map of dark matter. So if you want to check out a really cool image of the map of dark matter, believe it or not, I did a video talking about dark matter and dark energy, and I'll leave a link up here to that video. So if you want to check out the new hot topic in astronomy, check out my video on dark matter and dark energy. So what makes James Webb different from Hubble? Well, Webb is incredibly big. It's about as tall as a house and about as big as a tennis ball court. So it's much bigger than Hubble, whereas in Hubble it would only fit about half of the tennis court. James Webb fits the whole tennis court. And in terms of its mirror, Hubble's primary mirror was mostly composed of glass and it's silver because mostly Hubble was looking in the visual realm. And it did a little bit of infrared and a little bit of UV, but it mostly did visual and it did visible light spectrum. So hence why it's silver. James Webb's however, mirror, however, is much bigger. And it's also what is known as a multi-mirror. So that if one part of the mirror fails, the other mirrors can adjust in order to be able to compensate. So we're, one of the problems with the mirror in Hubble, they noticed that there was such a tiny flaw in the mirror, something about the size of a human hair kind of error that it kind of distorted the images. 
So even that kind of tiny little error in glass can distort an image. So hence why multiple mirrors for bigger telescopes are needed because you can get a lot more errors if you got bigger glass. So in this particular case, they have multiple mirrors. But as you'll notice on the side by side, there are different colors. The backing for the mirror in the Hubble Space Telescope is silver, whereas in the backing for the mirror on the James Webb Telescope is gold. And why is that? Well, it has to deal with the wavelengths that Hubble versus James Webb are going to observe. Hubble focused on the visual. So hence why when you look, go into your bathroom and you look at a mirror, there's a silver backing because visible light easily reflects off of silver. So that's why you're able to have the basically the touch up every morning in your bathroom because that silver backing is what is able to reflect visible light that you see um, from you on your reflection. Infrared, however, easily reflects off of gold. So gold kind of material is able to bounce off infrared much more easily. So hence why its mirrors are gold and James Webb's area of expertise is going to be in the infrared area versus where Hubble kind of leaned a little bit in the infrared and a little bit in the ultraviolet, but mostly visit, visited in the visible range. James Webb is going into the infrared. So why the difference? Well, you get to see different things. Because in the visible picture, you see all the beautiful gas and dust and stuff, but in the infrared, the gas and dust disappears. Because infrared focuses kind of like on heat source. So hence why the temperature guns that you've seen all around across um, our country to take your temperature, they're not necessarily um, measuring your temperature, they are, they are technically measuring the amount of infrared radiation coming off of your body that we then can associate with a temperature. So in the terms of our galaxy, gas and dust are cold. So they don't appear in infrared light, whereas in bright young stars do. So as you can see in the image on the right, infrared allows us to be able to pierce through the clouds to see stars that weren't easily visible through the gas and dust that you can see in the visible range. So what does that mean for James Webb? Well, Hubble using the a good Sean or deep field imaging, we're able to see the deep field that could find galaxies much more distant. But with infrared, we can look past some of the gas and dust within our own galaxy and go see further and further out to possibly find even more galaxies further out. Even far back as the, during the first states of when stars and the first galaxies were starting to form. So, we can start to understand a little bit more of the history of our universe by looking in deep infrared. So, and also another unique feature of James Webb where it's going to be placed, Hubble is in a high Earth orbit. So it's relatively high up in altitude, but James Webb is going to be much further out, what is at a point known as Lagrange point two. When it comes to Lagrange points, Lagrange points are basically points in space to where the gravity is balanced between different objects. So in this particular case, uh, the Lagrange point two is balanced between the Earth, Moon, and Sun. And at this particular point, objects can orbit around the Earth without having to worry about being flung out into space, but yet still attached to the Earth. So by being a little further out from the Earth, which does have some infrared radiation, we're able to look at different infrared objects since we're much further away. And that, to kind of go back a little bit, that kind of big white area that you see there is a heat shield. So that heat shield is what's going to allow us to basically to quote unquote, turn the heat shield back towards uh, the sun. So that way infrared radiation from the sun is not obstructing our view and using the gold image, the gold, um, mirror look towards space for infrared. So why is it a replacement? So they, many people in the news have said, oh, uh, uh, Hubble Space Telescope's replacement is coming out soon. It's technically not a replacement. It's a successor, but not a replacement. We don't wanna replace Hubble because as I mentioned, 
Hubble focuses on the visible, whereas in James Webb's focus on the infrared, we still want to get beautiful visual images. And we don't like to waste a resource, especially since it can last for about 10 more years. The engineers and scientists designed it in such a way that it can extend its mission for a long period of time, given it has some had to have a little bit of TLC and a lot of repair missions, but it can still keep going, especially in terms of visible images. So these two telescopes are te not going to technically be, uh, so Hubble's not technically going to be replaced. They're just going to work side by side. So as James Webb takes some infrared images, Hubble will take the visual of it and vice versa. And yes, Hubble's gone over several different repairs and updates and newer technology can only be installed on Earth. So hence why James Webb is considered the successor to Hubble, not its replacement, its successor. Because it took a lot of the lessons that we did learn from Hubble to develop James Webb. And it's hopefully with these two working together by side by side, basically master and apprentice, I sometimes like to say, you can, we can discover the, much more about our universe. So this is a side by side comparison of James Webb and the Hubble Space Telescope with the hopes to soon be able to get to see the launch coming in November. So if there's any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments below. If there's a topic you would love for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.